got some funny, but guess what? I got some news. Hold up, I got some news, y'all. What's your news? Like Mama's about to be back on the radio. Hey, let's get it. Back on the radio. Back on the radio. Back on the radio. Back on the radio. On the radio. On the radio. <laughs> God is good, huh? Mm-hmm. <gasps> let's make a beat. You got a beat, Dre? Yeah. All right, let's get it. Let's get All it. All right. Oh, oh, I like that. That's good. Okay. Anyway. Right. Okay, yeah. mama. Ah. Inspirational treasure <laughs> on the radio. Okay. Inspirational treasure on the radio. She's on the radio. Yeah. She's on the radio. She's on the radio. On the radio, like inspirational treasure. What? On the radio, okay. inspirational treasure. Okay. On the radio, she's on the radio. It's on the radio. She's on the radio. It's on the radio. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was Ooh, awesome. that was nice. That was, oh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, clean. I'm excited. God that was is doing clean. big hey. things. Mm-hmm. It is inspirational treasure on the radio. Inspirational. Welcome everybody to Inspirational Treasure with Shalonda Wynn. What's going on? What's up, Shalonda? How you? Nah. Hey, Jerry. How are you? Awesome. <laughs> Having a great day. How How is your Tuesday? Tuesday. Um, I can't even say that it's not a blessed one because God is good no matter what. So it's been it's been good. It's been good. How about you? Good, good. So, so who's our special guest for tonight, for the listening audience? Uh, well, our, our our special guest for tonight, when uh, when I get ready to introduce her, will be um, Zakia Monique. She is an author. She's a coach. She's just a phenomenal woman, and we've been uh, we've been kind of connected for a good while, a good while since we've been um, on Facebook. So, uh, she's going to be a very, very, very awesome, awesome guest tonight. So, when we get to her, y'all are going to love it. Yeah, yeah, all right, awesome. All right, Batman's on me. Uh, All right, Batman, well, thank you. I just want to give mad shots out to uh, Batman, to uh, Jerry Royce Live, is what you will see when you see his name posted. And this is Positive Power Double XL Radio, and um, we're just excited about that, excited about being on this platform. Um, Before we get into prayer, I don't know if many of you know this yet or understand, but we are officially starting tonight. The show has shifted just a little bit. Uh, We've noticed that being on for, uh, for our regular amount of time has been like, Man, we wish we could just go a little bit longer. Well, guess what? God gave us the okay to go a little bit longer. So we're going to be on here with you guys tonight from now until midnight. From now until midnight. Um, and for those of you who have been following my ministry for any length of time, y'all know that that you know that couple of hours shoots by like super, super, super fast. But Thank God for the extra time, right? So we're going to have an awesome time tonight. Let's go ahead and pray so that we can get to interviewing this phenomenal woman, all right? So, Father, we thank you right now. Oh, God, you're so amazing. You're so marvelous. You're so everything. And we start with giving you glory. We start with giving you praise. We start with exalting your name. We start, Father, with just allowing the people to know that there is nothing that we will do without you leading the way. So, Father, we ask that you would get in front of us, oh, God, that you would open our mouths, allow us to speak what you would have us to speak. And, God, everything that we speak tonight on this platform, that you uh, get the glory out of it. Father, we do nothing without you. God, we do nothing without you. We do nothing without acknowledging you and your power and your say-so and your will for our life. And so we thank you now for what you are doing. We thank you now for what you are going to do. We thank you now that we are not just giving you a superficial praise, but we are giving you praise that you are due. Hallelujah. We thank you now. We glorify you in the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you and that you are such a forgiver of sins, that you forgive us in your grace and mercy is everlasting. And so we thank you now that we are saved because of your son. We thank you that we have been given your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us along the way. For that, we're grateful. For that, we can't stop giving you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for who you are in our lives. Thank you, God, that you don't stop blessing us. Even when we can't sometimes see the blessing, you're still blessing us, Father. Thank you, God, that even when we can't see clear the way to go, God, you're still with us, oh God. Thank you that even when we cannot see the provision, 
you yet provide in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this platform. And most of all, we thank you for life, health, and strength. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Most High God. Hallelujah. I just magnify him on tonight. I'm excited about this time. I'm excited about the fact that God has extended our time, that he, um, that he has given an okay for us to be here, because obviously whatever it is that he wants to say, um, he feels like he can get it said um, in this platform. Positive Power 21 brings you uh, so, much, uh, so much knowledge, so much wisdom, so much good stuff. And so being a part of that, being a part of a place where we can actually give God glory without any uh, feeling any type of way or any hindrances, we are just excited about it. So for those of you who have never been on here with me, I am Prophetess Shalonda Williams, a.k.a. The Inspirational Treasure. And I listen, I've been inspired by God to inspire you. I've been inspired by him to inspire you. And so I'm excited about being here. Um, I'm, I'm going to introduce my guest to you first. Well, I'm not going to introduce her in a, a big way because y'all know I would prefer my guests to introduce themselves. I'm going to bring her on in a second. But before I do that, I want to explain uh, to somebody who may not understand uh, uh, where passion and prayer comes from. And I don't know why God is going there right now, but I want you to hear me and hear me well. Um, there are some of you who uh, who have been doing the little patty cake prayer with God for a very long time. And a lot of that comes from those people who are so familiar or they feel so familiar with God that they really do not put any effort or any thought into their prayers. They simply just go through the motions of prayer. Um, like when we were kids, you know, when you were a child and I'm not saying every child is this, is this way, but when we were children, we did it because our parents were teaching us how to do it um, because they were telling us the words to say. And we went through the motions because our parents, told us, this is what you do when you pray. You fold your hands like this, you bow your head, and you say these words, and they begin to teach us because that was their job, right? To train us in the way that we should go so that when we were older, we would not depart. And so what I'm doing with my children right now in our homeschooling sessions is we're having like a whole month full of nothing but teachings on prayer. They have to look up their own scriptures. We talk about the prayers. Right now they have five things, uh, including people and their desires or things they want um, God to do for them on a list. And they have to every single day pray for these things, and they cannot pray the same thing all the time. And so what I'm trying to teach them in this is that we cannot just be superficial with our prayers. God is a God of, of amazing things. He's phenomenal in everything that he does. And when he begins to bless us, there is nothing that nobody can take credit for, okay? And so I want to teach them, just like I'm, I'm teaching you right now, that if you are used to doing a patty cake, and yes, I patty cake because I call it juvenile prayer and I, this is no diss to you this is no uh, I'm, I'm trying to sock you in your eye or step on your toe I'm just being real with you from a prop from, from a prophet's perspective if you don't mind when you are giving God a patty cake prayer it's because you have become familiar with the process of praying but you do not know the value that is in the words that you speak when you begin to speak words out of your mouth in communication with God now I'm not telling you how you should do that I'm not telling you that you got to, you know, uh, be theatrical with it because God doesn't like the theatrics, but I'm telling you that the depth of what you are saying needs to be more than it was when you were a child. Understand what I'm saying to you. It has to be more than what you were saying when you were a child. It has to be more than what you were saying or doing when you were a child. In other words, and when I'm talking about children, I'm talking about the ones that were doing it because they were told to do it, right? And so I don't want you to just go through the motions because somebody is telling you what to do or how to pray. I want you to begin to put some thought into the words that you speak. When I'm doing my, uh, my 20, when I, when I was doing my close to walk challenge, and for those of you who don't know about the close to walk challenge, man, you should definitely ask some questions. But uh, as a coach, I do a, a, a challenge called um, uh, close to walk challenge. And within that time, we always talk about prayer. Sometimes we take more time talking about prayer than we talk about anything else. And so one of the things that I do in that time is I, I walk everybody through the model prayer. We call it uh, the, the 
uh, the Lord's Prayer. We call it that. But it's really the model prayer. Jesus said, pray in this way. In other words, these are the things that we should put before God, our Father who art in heaven. So when you begin to pray through this prayer, and I begin to break it down, and I begin to show them the different areas that Jesus covered, then people begin to think more about what they say when they're praying the prayer. It's not just something you learn in Bible school or in Sunday school, but it's something that you really understand and you've embodied it. And so now when you begin to pray, it's, it's, it's a heart thing. And it's not just a surface thing. I don't know who that was for, but I want you to take it and receive it. And I don't want you to get there and you're looking at people when you're in the church service and, 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 and you're looking at them and they're praying and they begin to pray and it seems like they're praying forever and, it seems, and they get all emotional and they begin to cry and, and they begin to rock and they begin to go through. And people out there in the audience are saying, yes, God, yes, God, because they can relate to what the people are praying. I don't want you to look at them and begin to wish that it was over. I want you to listen to them and begin to understand what they're saying and why they're saying it. Amen. I'm not talking about the, the deacons and the, and the mothers that you heard saying the same prayer and, 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 and you begin to get so accustomed to it that you just totally disregard it. I want you to begin to listen, and I want you to begin to understand why people pray the prayers that they prayed. I want you to begin to understand why the, the, the men and the women of God, every time they pray, they say, you know, God, thank you for healing my body. And you hear them say that every single time, and it's because they are grateful that God healed their body. And you don't understand that when God healed their body, he literally healed them from something that could have took them out of here. And so everything they begin to pray unto God has substance, and it's not just because mama said or daddy said or pastor said. Amen. So whoever that was for, I want you to receive that, and I want you to really uh, begin to take hold uh, of what you're praying. No more surface deep prayers. Amen. Amen. So now I want to introduce to you guys this wonderful, wonderful woman, right? Because I don't, I'm not saying I don't listen to everybody, because I do, I listen to a few people. I'm not, you know, one of those people that's kind of like, oh, no, you're just not on my level. I'm not going to listen to you, and I'm not going to listen to this person. I'm not going to listen to that person. But I found Z. I call her Z. And, and, well, everybody kind of calls her Z. So uh, I found Zakia Monique on Periscope first, actually. And um, I began to listen to her, and I was like, man, she is just awesome. And plus, her lips was popping. You know, she got that little matted lipstick type of thing she do on the regular, and it was just, it was just dope. And, but she was so real life, right? And so I began to listen to her, and I'm like, man, this is really good stuff. And so I began to interact with her, and we've had a couple of conversations. We prayed together. Um, I keep her lifted. She keeps me lifted. We talk um, and because we begin to build a certain rapport. And so what I began to learn about her is that not only is she a, a life coach, not only is she a relationship expert coach, but she is a lover of the Most High God. And so when you put all of that together, it means that when she begins to write, when she begins to coach, when she begins to, uh, um, to coach people live, she is doing it with the love, of the, the love of God at the root of her, okay? And so that matters. That matters to me. And so the reason why she's here tonight, first of all, is because she has a new book that is out, and I'm excited about it, and I wanted her to share about that tonight. But before I do that, I want her to come on here, say hello to Zakia Monique, and I want her to introduce herself. Hey, girl. Hey, hey, hey. How are you all? Um, introduce myself. Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm Zakia Monique. I'm a master life and relationship strategist. I am a writing strategist. I am a transformational speaker and so many times people have said, you know, how are you a master life and relationship strategist? What is that? And people have no idea that I'm not telling you that I'm the master. I'm telling you I work for the master. So Come when on. I say master life and relationship strategist, I'm telling you that it is he who is working within me and it is he who has sent me. So um, yes. I just, I, I love what I do. I help uh, professional women, you know, entrepreneurs, coaches to uh, prepare for, attract, and maintain um, love and to help them in their businesses as well because what happens is we, quite frankly, forget about our personal development when we get in business, and that's not going to work. You know, we have to know how to handle business appropriately. So I help you on the love side with the personal business with healthy relationships, and I help you on the business side with healthy relationships as well. So I am the relationship lady. 
Yes, <laughs> she is. Yes, she is. And listen, some like everybody, and I'm and here's I'm a, I'm gonna just go ahead and give y'all this real, real, uh, real good, real raw right now. Everybody can't take Z. <laughs> Everybody can't yeah. take Z because listen, when she gets when she get the going, oh God, and don't give her a subject that she's just like super passionate about and somebody just don't really cross the line. Because when she get to going in, I mean, it's like a holy ignorant, um, and a, a holy uh, wrath that comes forth. And the people, if you can't take it, you might just want to jump off the live. But she is so real and so raw, and I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Z, tell me why the people can't take you. Why you think the people can't take you? You tell me. Uh, you know, one young lady said that I made her hate her husband and... It wasn't that I made her hate it. I just uncovered the hate. Um, I understand that my I understand my gift is speaking, whether it's through a book, whether it is through um, coaching, whether it is you know uh, actual speaking engagements. And so, I am very passionate when it comes to speaking, and I feel like you know time is a gift, so let's not waste it. I'm not going to pity pat you. You know we can we we have fun too. You know, my crew, we have so much fun, but I have a duty to give you the truth. And if I mm. don't, then I have to answer for that. So I take it seriously. Um, I take it personally. You know, when um, I'm, at the, I'm at the point where I have to, you know, say something that's hard. You know, I just, I just believe that I was, um, I was created to say some of the hard things sometimes. You know, there are some people who were just created to say the hard stuff. And I used to think that God didn't want people to like me because I'm like, God, everywhere I go, you know, you, you, you prompt me and you won't let me rest until I say things, whether it's in my family, whether it's with friends or whatever. I'm always the one that says the hard stuff. But at the same time, I'm also the one that people respect because I said it. It was hard, but, I, but they know I love them enough to say it because that's what we need. We need someone who loves us enough. To, to wrestle with our spirit man, you know, mm. I need to speak to your spirit. So, you know, there was a young lady who was very near and dear to my heart, and she was with this guy, and, you know, the relationship just kind of didn't start well. You know, it didn't start well, and so when it was time for marriage, you know, everything seemed to go well, but I asked the question, do you believe God sent him to you? Because God mm. doesn't send you anybody else's husband. And so... She said, well, you know, what you saying? You know, and, and again, we love each other so much, but nobody has said anything to her. And right. I had to. I had to. She came back later and said, thank you, because I know that you love me because you risked me being upset with you, but you were, you know, you were not willing to sugarcoat the truth. And, and to this day, she still, you know, she still, we, we have a wonderful relationship. Man, that's phenomenal. That's so awesome. And I think that I get it, right? Because um, I I am a big ball of love, absolutely. But um, I'm not really afraid to tell, you know, the full of it all. I uh, I struggle sometimes with, with saying certain things to certain people, but I end up getting it out. Once I, especially once I build it up inside of me that I just absolutely cannot not say this. Um, I, I'm very um, good about bringing it out. And coaching, uh, we both, we're both coaches. And mm-hmm. so when you're coaching somebody um, to not tell them the truth, you know, you're not even giving them 100% of your effort. It's just kind of like, you know, uh, I'm here, I'm going to take your money, and then you're going to leave, and you're going to believe that this is all good when it's really not. And, from you know, I, I title myself a Christian life coach, but truthfully, um, I operate in the prophetic very heavily in, in my sessions, and I'm led by God about what to say and what not to say. Um, I don't mm-hmm. title myself. I think I told somebody this earlier. I don't title myself a prophetic coach, and the reason why I don't do that is because I'm not looking for nobody to try to pimp my gift. That wasn't the whole purpose yeah. of it. But when I do write out my um, – my, when I send the invoice, I put the information on the invoice, and a part of that, I tell them that there will be godly insight. And if you are to receive this word, um, then trust that it's from God. And so, but the reason why I have to put that in the little block is because God don't really care about your feelings, not when it comes no, to you. Understand what I'm trying to say? The Bible well, says no, that God, faces, but, but, yeah. But you got to remember, God, everywhere in the Bible, not to cut you off, but everywhere in the Bible, no, you good. When God talked about when God talked about feelings, it was a don't. Don't fear. Don't worry. Don't. Right. Everything was done. Right. So 
he's not he's not concerned with your feelings. And I often tell my clients, facts over feelings, baby. Facts over feelings. Don't don't tell me what you feel. Tell me what's real. What's the facts? Let's stick to that because those facts very rarely ch- change. You know what I'm saying? Facts very uh-huh. rarely change. So let's talk facts. Let's not talk feelings. Don't tell me how you feel. That can change in the next five minutes. But tell me um, what are the facts. So, you know, I just wanted to, in, you know, just insert no, that you, piece. You, you I was not right. that. And, that, and that's the thing, because he said, I, what I was about to say was that God says that he chases those that he loves. And what, what that means is, I'm going to discipline those that I love. I'm going to, in other words, I'm going to correct those that I love. And it's not about, you know, like, you know, when you read First Corinthians 13, it tells you all the things that love is. Um, but one of the things that it says is that love rejoices when what? When truth, you know, with truth and uh, with justice and with those things. And so, in other words, the truth has to be there in order yeah. for love to rejoice. And so um, it's a tough thing sometimes. I mean, you know, some people have a lot uh, a tougher feelings than I do, so they don't get as caught up as I do, if, you know, and as emotional as I may after the fact. But, <laughs> but I do take pride in the fact that those who do co- um, coach with me or follow me in ministry, excuse me, they do understand that, um, that everything that I do or say to them is in love. And so I brought up the whole, you know, you being a relationship coach and all that and those things for a reason, right? Because mm-hmm. you have a new book out. I um, do. Is this your first book, Z? It is. It is. Man, it is. man, it's a new book and it's your first book. Well, congratulations, honey. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Thank That's you. wonderful. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your book. And we're going to um, um, allow you to exp- expound more because this is just going to bring out more of what you were already saying. And the title of your book is Killer Connections. Yes. <laughs> Killer Connections, Recognizing, Releasing, and Repairing Toxic Relationships. And so yes. we're going to um, allow you to, like, expound on, um, on what your book is about. Before I do that, hold on a second. Let me find that quote. Because, uh... I was I was skimming through because I brought I purchased the book the other day when you were on mm-hmm. the, um, the other radio show that I saw you on and so I haven't dug all the way in it yet so I don't need you to tell me everything that's in it but mm-hmm. um this <laughs> this this quote by Johnny Depp it says you can close your eyes to the things you don't want to see but you can't close your heart to the things you don't want to feel. And so yeah. this is a recognizing of toxic relationships. And so tell us, Zakia, about your book, what, what it's about, where does it go, and how deep do you go? Um, so with uh, this book, uh, God gave me the title, and I was kind of like, where are we going with it? And what he showed me was relationships are the number one impediment to purpose. Uh, relationships are also the cornerstone of life. So the issue is, and what happened with most of my clients is they would come to me and I would ask them, okay, do you want to, you know, let's find your purpose. And they would say, well, I got this problem with this relationship though. So I realized very quickly that we have to clean up relationships first so that people can get on the right track because let's be real, even marriage, when you join in marriage, the, the whole point is, to further your purpose. It's not just to recreate. Like we think it's just about, you know, we get married so we can have sex. No, um, marriage is about purpose. It's about moving forward and doing the thing that God has ordained for you to do. Um, And so uh, I, I, you know, I I started to write and infuse my story into uh, teaching. You know, I wanted to teach people something. And so you know, this is just the way that God led me. So in this book, it gives you an in-depth look at the root causes, the warning signs, traits, mindsets, and then it gives my real-life examples of toxic relationships because I want people to be able to, particularly young women, between the ages of 16 and 25, I want them to really be able to easily recognize toxicity so that they can save time and possibly even save their own lives because Many times we join with someone and this person is not right, but they've wined and dined us. And then we, you know, we lay and play with them. And now our vision is cloudy. We're not dating sober anymore. And we miss the signs or we turn our head to the signs. And then we look up, we got babies, and then they reveal who they really are. Well, I want young women to know 
the predators because let's be real, they're not going anywhere. Okay. Predators, um, manipulators, narcissists, as long as we have a dysfunctional world, you know, that we're dealing with, you know, a world full of dysfunction, as long as we have dysfunctional homes, as long as we continue in this perversion uh, with all of this sex and all this stuff, we're going to have people that are going to uh, do wrong, you know? Um, and so right. with that being said, if you cannot uh, prevent, then you prepare. And so my thought is let's prepare our young women to go out and to recognize when they're being preyed upon. Now, on the flip side of that, there are older women, which are their parents particularly, who don't know about toxic relationships either. So they get into relationships and they watch what their mothers went through. You know, they watch what they went through. And so this book will help them to get out of those situations. So I'm trying to prevent the younger girls from getting into the situations and I'm helping the older women to come out of those situations to help them understand that you have normalized this dysfunction. This is not right. And you can have better. Man. <laughs> Man. So like what mm-hmm. you're doing right now is you're literally breaking some serious um, generational curses. And, yes. you know, just from, you know, from a God perspective, that's, that's what you're, what, what you just said to me is that I want to break the curse. And so you're not just trying to break it with the young girls by teaching them, them and preparing them, but you're going back to at least their root, right? Their mom or their dad, their root. Um, and of course yes. we know that most of the time those things start way, way, way back when I'm in prayer and when I'm, when I'm praying for many people, God will begin to tell me to pray for them and go back and break generational curses from 50 years back or 50 mm-hmm. generations on back. That's even longer than 50 years because um, yeah. he, he'll say it start, that started here. Or he'll say 37 generations. That started here. And so now we got to go in and, and literally begin to break in the spirit realm because I'm going to be honest with you, this, this book is going to be phenomenal for those who can receive it. But when you're bound up in your spirit, a lot of times you can read a whole book and look at it and be like, okay, I got it. But your yeah. spirit is all tied up. And so um, this, man, listen, this this book, for those who are ready or open in their spirit to be able to receive it, it's going to seriously, seriously break some chains and break some generational curses. So talk to me a little bit about... Um, you're kind of talking about what the book was about, who you're trying to reach with the book, Um what led to you writing this book outside of you being a relationship coach and what, what personally be transparent for a moment, what caused you to want to, or what experiences caused you to even get into this area to want to actually um, go there with people and be real. Um, a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost is what I had gone through and it was the best way for me because I had in my mind wasted 20 years. Uh, with someone mm-hmm. hoping, wishing, waiting. Uh, there's a quote that I love that says, um, "Time can heal. Uh, uh, um, time can heal. Uh, what is it? What is it? Time can heal a broken heart, but it can hurt. It can hurt a waiting heart. So Ooh. time can heal a broken heart, but it can hurt. It can it can break a waiting heart. And so know, what happened was I was. I was, you know, waiting and hoping that love would prevail, not realizing that just because you love someone does not mean that it is meant for you to be together with that person. Sometimes Mm -hmm. they understand their level of toxicity, and if they really love you, they won't move forward and, and, you know, and and poison you. And so I spent 20 years allowing someone to block up my life. We were in a relationship for a portion of those years, but then the latter portion, I just let them continue to block up my life. Um, and I said to myself, how can I get the years back? How can I maximize what I went through? And the best way is to make your pain pay you. And so Mm -hmm. I didn't think when I said make your pain pay you, I didn't think literally, I thought, yeah, I thought pay me by, you know, helping someone else. I didn't think pay me like as in, oh, this book is going to, you know, I didn't think that way, but my, My the best thing that I could do is gift my pain to someone else, gift this experience to someone else. So the first thing I wanted to do was to teach people how not to do what I did. That was number one. Number two, um, I wrote this book because I wanted to let people know that, listen, um, I have a daughter. 
And until we are more concerned about more than just me and my two, you and yo three, you know, I, mm-hmm. yes, I have a daughter, I have a son, and I could very well educate mine, and that's it. But the world around me influences and impacts me, too. So right. it's not enough for me to just gift my children with my experience. I wanted to gift your children and their children and this person's right. children with that, too, with hopes that those who are prepared would, would receive it and hopefully not make those same mistakes. So. I wanted to help someone else's child because what I understand is the poor will be among us always. Sometimes it's poor in finance. Sometimes it's poor in spirit. Sometimes it's Mm. poor in knowledge. Some people just don't know what they don't know, you know? And so there may be a young woman who's 35 years old with so five, six, seven babies, and she just does not know until someone tells her. And I'm not responsible for how she receives it. I'm only responsible for me conveying it in a way in which God is pleased because the Bible also tells us that one plant is one water, but God gives the increase. And oftentimes we're so concerned with whether they received it, whether they're mad, whether they offended. I am only concerned with the fact of whether I conveyed it in a way in which God is pleased and I don't have to repent. I'm not trying to add my sauce on to it because the word of God is already sharp. So I don't need to add anything else. I just want to make sure that I'm in order when I offer it. If you don't accept it, that's not for me to to determine. So I just wanted to do those two things. Number one, I wanted to redeem the time and the best way for me to redeem what I have been through at the time I had considered myself quote unquote wasting was to gift it to someone else. And then the second thing was I was, you know, concerned with my community as well. So, you know, you have Absolutely. to, before you can teach, you got to reach. My mm. gosh, we want to skip the reaching process. It, you know, each one, teach one. No, right. each one, reach one. And then reach them. you my can't God. teach until you reach. And we don't want to do the reaching part because that's the part that's dirty and, and that's the part that, that's painful. My goodness, that's absolutely true. Oh, Zakia. <laughs> I told you I love her. And then when y'all listen, listen, when y'all listen to her talk, you're just kind of like, man, I'm just going to suck up all this wisdom. Because it's not, it's, not, it's, not it's not just schooling, and she has that, right? It's not just that. It is yeah. it's the wisdom of God. We're about to take a break real quick, Z, but stay with me because I want to come okay. back. There's some, there's, um, I want to talk more about what you said about reaching um, it before you can teach. And I also want to talk about what you said when you said the world around me influences me too. So in other mm-hmm. words, we can talk about what goes on in this house, stays on in this house or whatever, but that's not my, the only part of my world. So what goes mm-hmm. on in this house has influenced me, but also what goes on out there influences me. And I'm going to share a little bit too when we come back from this break. Stay with me, all right? Okay.
you right in the middle of it. Changed my story right in the middle of it. You were there right in the middle of it. Giving me love right in the middle of it. Giving me peace right in the middle of it. Giving me joy right in the middle of it. Right in the middle of it, living my life right in the middle of it, trying to live it right in the middle of it, change my heart right in the middle of it, change my mind right in the middle of it, save my family in the middle of it, save my marriage in the middle of it, and keep my children in the middle of it. Amen, amen, and amen. That was in the middle of it by Re. Y'all, um, I, I don't know if it's very easy to find Re um, on like uh, YouTube and Spotify and all those things, but if you can find Re, please find her and um, and look for some of these songs. There's such worship in them. And this one was called, again, In the Middle of It. And uh, so I think that you'll love it if you just kind of look her up and just keep it, um, uh, keep her music in your ear. She speaks some real-life stuff, and just now she's saying, you know, God, in the middle of it, like, you did so much. You know, you changed my heart in the middle of it. She talked about making me whole in the middle of it. She talked about um, changing my mind in the middle of it. There's so many things that God does in the middle of what? In the middle of your circumstances, in the middle of your trials, in the middle of your tribulations in the middle of those toxic relationships, in the middle of so many things, God just does, like, just, man, it's fantastic to serve a God that loves us enough that to, he's there even in the middle of it, in the middle of it. Hey, Z, you still with us? I am. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The song, the song is, uh, she, she just talking about being in the middle of it, and we done been in the middle of some stuff, don't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We've been in the middle of some stuff, and God is still faithful, man. Like, I just, you know, when you begin to think about him and how good he is and how he never really, when he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, really, it is just so real life. And sometimes I think when we are in the middle of situations, you get so anxious and so frantic that you forget to reach for the lifeline. You forget to mm -hmm. reach for the one that's there in the middle of it. And so, yeah, I'm, I, I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So before we go further, before I ask you any more questions, I want you to give your information to where they can get the book now, and I'm going to ask you again once we're done chatting. So tell them where they can get your book. Um, they can get the book at www.killerconnections.com, and there you are able to get um, either the hard copy, you know, the printed copy, or you can get the ebook. and I am actually on a campaign I chose impact over income, because what I want to do is get this book in the hands of at least 1,000 young women. So I've left the book at 99 cents so that, you know, I can get this book in the hands of the young women so that they are not prey, so that they are prepared. So www.killerconnections.com will get you the book in either uh, form. And if you decide to help us out with a thousand young ladies. You can purchase and gift as many as you want. All you have to do is just get their email addresses and plug it in and it shoots it right to their Kindle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that that's that's awesome. And I'm gonna tell you guys when it comes to Kindle, you know, you don't have to be like, but when I don't have one, guess what? You can go to Amazon, download a free Kindle um app to your phone, your computer your um, tablet, whatever. Um, so if you want to do that, if you want to gift a young woman that a, a young woman that you know is simple, you know, um, send her the message. You can you can of course get her email, send it to that Kindle, um, and send her the instructions on how to download the app if she doesn't know how. But we want to make sure that this book has an impact, and so that that's phenomenal. She did y'all hear what she said when she said I chose impact over income. <laughs> 
But the saint, not even the saints understand that, Z. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. Not even the saints understand that, but I'm choosing <laughs> impact over income. And I know, you know, we've talked before, so you know that I've been in full-time ministry for a while. And um, mm-hmm. and so that mindset, that, that mindset, and I, it's not to say that everybody is called to this because everybody's not. Um, because when you, when you step out there and you say, okay, God, I'll do it, you know, full-time, this is what you're asking me to do. You're asking me to focus on my time, attention, on studying prayer, hearing from you, getting instruction, going out, um, whether I end up around the corner at the corner store or whether or not I end up in another state when you say, go, I need to go. And so that's a tough thing. And people, a lot of people do not understand it, but it is that it's, it's, it's impact over income, exactly what you just called it. Um, because at the end of the day, um, God's will must be completed no matter what it is that we may feel. And um, I've coached with people, of course. I have my own coaches. I do support coaching 100%. Um, I have my own coaches. And, of course, from the coaching perspective, it's like, listen, you got to know your worth. You got to make sure that you do this. You got to make sure you do that. Um, but the one thing that I, I do um, have to reiterate for even my coaches, even those who are super brilliant at what they do, is that when God says move, that's my move first. Uh, one mm-hmm. of the things that he told me uh, was when I get ready to go speak and when I go to different um, engagements, when I go, whether it's state to state or not, um, that I can set a price. I can set a price if I'm doing a coaching um, workshop, if I'm doing coaching classes, if I'm doing a coaching thing, um, if I'm going to teach or do a workshop in another city at a church or whatever, I can charge per head. I can, you know, put a price on a book. I can do all that. But when I go to preach the word of God and deliver um, prophetically that I'm not to put a certain price on that. And this is what he told me, Z. He said, oh, you, you, you can limit me now, right? So be limited later. And at first I had to sit with that thing. I was like, God, what does that mean? And so he was beginning to show, girl, ah, I feel the Holy Ghost just now. He began to, he began to show me the different levels of seed that people would give, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I'm, of course, I'm seeing in my head, I'm seeing the $30 checks, and I'm seeing the $100 checks, and I'm seeing the $200 checks, and then he began to show me bigger numbers, right, as, you know, the, the just different slides of different numbers. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, my mind can't really fathom a seven-figure check. It couldn't at the time. It couldn't really process a seven-figure check with my name on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a limiting thought and a limiting belief for me at one time. But he he put it out there and he said, if you you say you're doing my will, this is what you want to do. No, this is what you're going to do. Then don't limit me now. And I won't limit myself later. But if you limit me now and you say that this is what your cost is, then then that's what it's going to be. You can raise it a couple of dollars if you want to, but that's still going to be your max. And and so um, we we end up doing things a little bit different than um, other people do when you when you really when you're really doing it as a ministry because that's mm-hmm. actually what you're doing in the sense of so when you do it as a ministry and to serve your mindset is not always the same as other people. So I want you to talk to me a little bit more about this. You want to impact a thousand young girls, and so um, you already stated that you want them to be impacted. You want their lives to be changed. You don't want them to make the same mistakes. You don't want them to make the um the, the just really just foul up like some of us did anyway without the mm-hmm. knowledge and understanding. So what I want to ask you now is about those young women. And, you know, when it comes to biblical understanding, right, um, and this is not about being um, power to the woman, feminist, or none of that stuff, uh, we mm-hmm. know that biblically um, God talks to us women about our nature, who we are, who he created us to be, um, how we are there for the man um, in a lot of ways. Not to say that he's not there for us, but it, mm-hmm. you you read it, so you already know what I'm talking about. Um, mm-hmm. So how do we uh, teach the, the young girls the difference? Because uh, here we, we, they get into relationships. We know that marriage is a covenant with God. It's not something that yeah. we can just enter into lightly. It says that. And so when we get into these relationships with these broken people, because really you get in relationships with other broken people and two broken people trying to make it work. And so mm-hmm. how do we honor God's covenant? How do we honor God and the things that he told us to do as women um, and being help meets and all this stuff and back Balance that with making sure that we do not allow the toxic toxic relationships to kill us, really, to just take us out of here. Um, 
Okay, so there's a difference between a broken person and a person that just has some baggage. We all have baggage. Okay, we're right. all because we've been through experiences, whether you've been in a relationship, whether you've been married and divorced or whatever, we have baggage, meaning we have experience from that. Um, what what happens is when you meet someone else, you typically are, you know, presenting to them, here's who I am, or this is what's supposed to happen. Here's who I am. Here's my baggage. They say, here's who I am. Here's my baggage. And then you guys decide whether you're strong enough to help each other unpack. That's what's really supposed to happen. But what unfortunately happens is we don't show each other the real us for various reasons. And so by the time a person realizes all the baggage you have, they're like, oh, no, oh, no, I'm, right. I, can't, I can't handle all of that, you know, because you didn't show yeah. them up front and give them the choice. So there's a difference between damage, you know, and, and uh, wounded and broken and, uh, a person who just has baggage. Um, now, when you get into the toxic and the wounded, you know, one of the things that really annoy me, and you know how I am about just being straight up, one thing that annoys me is a woman will continue to attract broken men and then mm-hmm. say it's because she's a healer. But here's the problem <laughs> that with that. <laughs> yeah, here's the problem with that. This is the problem. <laughs> If you continue to attract broken men and they break you, who getting healed? Right. Yeah. Help us so, on it. Be- yeah, so if you're a healer, you should be healing them, right? They shouldn't be breaking you. Come on so, now. You know, so my thing is we, we have to stop it with the cute stuff, right? We have to just be honest about it. And the truth is two broken people that are broken in the same areas can't, they just, they can't. <laughs> They just can't fix each other. They, they can't. And most of us don't have the tools. Now, this person has to be willing to fight, and they have to be willing to go and get the help, and you can support them in that. But if you're not, uh, like I have, I have a degree in sociology, and then I also have a degree in, uh, I have a master's in human resources. So I, that gives me the um, education side where I can give you tools in the social realm, the personal development, and I can give you professional development. But if you don't have tools to give a person, how you, what are you going to do? You know? So, again, the person, I can fight with you, but I'm not going to fight you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to fight for you, but I can fight with you. So that's what it really comes down to. Is the person willing to fight? Are they willing to go and get the help and the tools that they need to get better? And, and to go from there. But you can't fix them most of the time. And that's what we try to do is become the one that fixes and saves them. And then what happens is, unfortunately, when you fix a man, what usually happens is he says, thanks, Kate, bye, and goes and marries the next woman. You should, and you're like, you better come on now. If I can throw a shoe at like, you, go and say it. So I was up here all this time working on you, dealing with you, and all of that, and you went and got the next because if you fix them, and if you, you, you're you a mother figure now. Men don't marry their mother. They don't marry mom. You know what I'm saying? So when you become mother to them, you, hey, it's, it's a wrap. I mean, because, again, they're not, they don't, they can't marry a person that they never are over. You know, men have to feel like they can lead you. Even if they're not equipped, they still got to feel like My they're the head. They have to feel like they're the head. If they don't feel like they're the head of you, they will go find someone that they can be the head of. So, it, it, you know, it's just, that's just what it is. But ultimately, we can't, we have to just be who we are and attract who's for us. That's the main thing. Be who you are. And whatever that, you know, whatever that looks like, that's what it is. That's who I am right now. That's where I am right now. And then your natural aura. Why do you think when you meet a man and your hair turn up and you don't have makeup on, you just run to the corner store and you seem to meet more men then than you do when you fixed up and, 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 and made up or whatever? Because that's your natural aura. Your natural aura will pick up, will, will, will get the guy or the person that's for you. So Come on. be who we are and allow that to attract who we will heal and build with. That's it. My God, that's good stuff right there. And that's funny because I was telling somebody, uh, you know, I don't wear a lot of makeup. I, if you ever, you know, you see my picture. So, you know, I just don't. Mm-hmm. I just don't. It's not that I, I don't hate people who do. 
I just yeah. never did. And I can count on one hand how many times I've ever worn makeup. And um, I had, I think, the first time probably was when I was in, I think, going to the senior prom or something. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like um, um, I don't, I just never did. And I think one of the things that I used to always say is that, that like, if you can, if you can meet me and you like me and you love me like this, then you know. Every now and again, I don't, I don't mind getting dressed up or maybe putting on some makeup or something like that. And, and then you can still think I'm beautiful or you think that it enhances some part of me. But if you don't think I'm beautiful without it, if you don't, if you don't think I'm beautiful in this state, and, and, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even talking about or giving excuse um, to women that are not, that, that we don't really care about our appearance or anything like that or about mm-hmm. our health and none of that stuff. I'm not giving an excuse for that. I'm not saying just, you know, women just be whatever and, you know, be slag, don't take care of yourself, none of that. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that when you show up authentically, and I do, I want to show up authentically. I show up mm-hmm. authentically in my personality, right? So, like, I'm, I really am. I think I make more um, uh, connections with people, especially men. I'm very... I I try to be very careful now on this side of salvation, right? I, um, mm-hmm. well, on this side of living out my salvation, I try to be more careful about building rapports with men because I, I'm naturally who I am. I yeah. am naturally a person who really don't meet no strangers, you know, talking, us talking on the phone for a couple of weeks straight, you know, we might feel like we got to try to figure out whether or not this is real or what, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> So I show up authentically in so many ways. And so, you know, we just want to be, I, I walk out natural. If you can love me like this, then you can love me for life or whatever. So I get it. Um, oh, so we were going to talk about what you said when you said that the world around me influences me too, right? And and we were saying how, you know, they used to have that saying, what goes on in this house stays in this house, as mm-hmm. if being in the house is the only thing that affects me. It's not. And I was going to share with you before I, um, I let you loose on that particular um, script. I, I When I was young, I didn't, like my biological father, He they divorced. He went to say someplace else. Then he moved to Brunswick, which is like an hour away from us. And I didn't see him often all the time. Um, but I didn't have really a lack of anything in my home because my mom, you know, got in another relationship and I was really young. Um, then I have my brothers and my sisters who are all way older than me. It's 11 years between me and my brother from my mom and in 13 years and 14 years. And so I didn't really have a lack of love at home. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't have a lack of love at home. Um, and the things that did happen at home, I was kind of guarded from. So it just wasn't a whole lot. But when I left out and I went to school, I was treated like really not like not cool. Like I got teased about my nose. I got teased because my hair was too long. People used to pull my hair. I used to get bullied, you know, treated, just treated unfairly by people. And so that began to define who I thought I was. Right. Mm -hmm. Because y'all, my family, you, my mama, you, um, you, my, 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 my T that's, that's what I call my stepfather. You, my daddy, you, my T you, my sisters and my brothers, y'all supposed to love me. That's just automatic. But when I got outside the world, right, is what shaped me in a way that made me feel like I was worthless, right? I was not, y'all tell me I'm pretty, that's fine, cool. But when I get to school, they don't say the same thing. So somebody lying here. That's kind of how I felt. Like, I mean, I was young, but somebody ain't telling me the truth. So obviously my family is telling me this because they love me, but the world is telling me that this is who I am, this is who I'm not. And so I've been influenced now. And what I ended up doing was I ended up trying to find a way to make people impressed with me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Who, who's going to stay? Who's going to like me? Uh, in third grade, I had a little boyfriend that I was attracted to. As a matter of fact, we ended up dating later on in life. But we, he was my, like the third grade boyfriend, and he liked whoever brought him candy that day. You know? Oh. So of course, I was trying to figure out how much candy I can get. Now, even when I, even when I did, now he actually liked me a little bit. So even when I didn't have candy, you know, he would kind of like me, but most of the time he would be with whoever. And even if he did still like me, he would like the other girls too. And so when we're shaped at a young age like that, right now, I still got affirmations. I mean, I still got affirmed at home. I still got loved on at home. My sister and my mom and them still made sure my hair was pretty, still made sure I had the little frilly socks and stuff that I needed. Um, and the men in my life were very protective. But when I got outside, and we, that you're just talking about the world, when I got out in the world from that age on up until high school, 
when I was skipping school to be with my boyfriend in his car. You understand? Trying to validate, trying to make myself feel as if I was something, I was valuable, I was worth something, um, and this is valuable. They want this, so let me give this away, right? And so it's not just a home issue. Sometimes it is the world that influences you the most. So talk to me a little bit more about the world influencing you too and the girls and what they're being influenced by. Um, well, it's, it's two part, uh, physically, you know, in the natural, I should say, um, my son goes to school. So if I just educate my son or my daughter, like when my daughter was in the 12th grade, I didn't allow her to wear weeds. I wanted her to, I wanted her and I didn't allow her to make, to wear any makeup, um, you know, all that foundation and stuff. I told her, no, I said, you know, you won't wear any of that stuff until prom. And so because she didn't wear it, a lot of the young girls teased her, but the guys liked it because they were like, we like natural. You know, guys, the the, the mm-hmm. older guys, you know, guys were now in their, you know, 17, 18-year-old uh, phases. So they were like, we like the fact that you wear your natural hair, but now the girls are saying you're different. So anytime you're different, you know. So my daughter comes home and she's crying. And so either even if I don't um, – Even if I educate mine, I still have to deal with someone who didn't educate theirs because in some type of way, that's going to impact me. You know, whether your child is, is, you know, uh, growing up to steal and take or uh, bully and and fight, you know, um, Michigan was named the number one state for bullying, you know, and I'm in Michigan. So, again, it impacts me because even, even if my children weren't in school, we have family, family members bully. You know, things of that nature. So you're going to have to interact. Again, relationships are the cornerstone of life. You're going to interact with someone. And if those, I can't rely on just their parent doing their job. If I can help and if I have uh, the knowledge, why wouldn't I at least extend it? Again, I'm not concerned with what you do. I'm I'm only making sure I extend the knowledge that I have. We can't, the Bible tells us in the spiritual uh, aspect, we're to love our neighbors as ourselves. How can I love my neighbor if I'm only concerned with me? So for me, it it came down to the fact that am I doing my reasonable service to God if I keep all that I've learned over these 20 years that could benefit someone else? And the answer is no. And oftentimes we're not doing our reasonable service when we're just going to church and trying to go to heaven off the second pew. We're not doing our reasonable service because there's something you've gone through in your life. The Bible, uh, the Bible tells us they overcome by the word, uh, the, the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies. Testimonies. People need your testimonies. You know what I'm saying? Testimonies. We need testimonies. But we're, we're to the point where we don't say, we won't say what it is because we're embarrassed, we're ashamed to admit where we've come from or what we, no, no. You know what I'm saying? So I am not ashamed to say who I am. And even in the book, I say, you may judge me. That's okay. But, but the fact is I'm not there anymore. So I'm not concerned with that. But ultimately we have a duty to gift our pain to someone so that they can possibly avoid it and reach their purpose sooner. Amen. Amen. So you, you, uh, and you also said we have to reach them before we can teach them. So now you, you also brought up a point just now while you were talking, like, you know, we sitting down on the pew, we're just doing what we do. It is what it is. And I do believe that everybody has their assigned place. You know what I mean? I believe yes. that you have your assigned place, even if see, we, a lot of people have a problem right, with filling in, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. we feel like everybody has to be at a top, what we consider, right, to be a top notch or a super high level, okay? What I mean by that is everybody's not a king. Mm-hmm. Everybody is right. president. Everybody not the pastor. Everybody's not, the, you understand? Now, we, and we, yeah. give, we give so much flack to the church, it's crazy. I'm not even going to go there right now, but, you know, I can, I can see they wouldn't even put pastor in the same category with king or president or nothing like that because they don't really believe in leaders anymore. So I'm not going to go there, but 
everybody's not a king. Everybody's not a pastor. Everybody's not um, a, a president. Everybody's not in the fivefold ministry giftings. Let me go ahead and put that out there. Everybody is not in these things that we consider, right, to be this grand thing. And we're not televangelists. Everybody's not all those things. And sometimes we feel like if we're not that, then we're not valuable. We're not effective. Yeah. We are not needed. And so I used to, um, I have a, a, a book and I wrote it a long time ago and I'm about to revise it for the U2. Then it's called Purposeful You. You are full of great purpose. And I think in one of those parts of that book, I wrote about the cameraman as opposed to the anchor, the, mm-hmm. the news anchor. In other words, Now, you know, now they have those cameras that can kind of run by themselves, but guess what? Somebody still got to fix it if it get broke. You know, you still need people. But we have Mm -hmm. cameramen, and we have the news anchors. Would the news anchor be able to be seen without the person running the camera? No. Mm -hmm. Right? So, you know, if if, 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 if whoever's writing the news stories, the anchor person is not always the one who writes their own stories. Sometimes somebody else is writing the story. When you have a movie, you have the actors and the actresses, absolutely. But they got a script because somebody wrote it. Then because somebody picked the cast to play the part. You, you understand what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. makes things flow. So even when it comes to um, um, church or ministry or even just, just every, every, every last one of us, no matter who we are, God created us with something. So if you are uh, what we consider to, what people consider to be a servant, um, somebody would mm-hmm. uh, look at somebody who says that they love their job being a maid or being a nanny. They really love it. They think it's like the most exhilarating thing in the world. They would look at a person like that. Some people would and be like, man, you crazy. Yeah, you don't take care of somebody else. Sure. Oh, uh-uh, I can't do that. And why would you do this? And Oh, you a servant, huh? Oh, but well, I'm going to have people serving me. It's almost as if we snicker at people who fill in and that's a problem. So now people begin to feel like if I'm not the pastor, if I'm not the prophet of the house, if I'm not the apostle, if I'm not the teacher or the, or the evangelist on program, then I'm not relevant. And Mm -hmm. so that has made the the body of Christ come to a standstill in many occasions, because guess what? When you went and opened your corner store, you feel like that's nothing. You felt like, oh, I just did that to be an entrepreneur. But guess what? You're still in a position to do something to affect somebody's life. And so you just said, reach before you can teach. Speak to that person who feels like their story is not relevant, their testimony is not relevant, and what their, you know, the platform that they want to create. They may just want to do a little small class of people, a five. Please speak to the person that wants to do that and tell them um, how important it is to just simply reach them first before they can teach. Um, particularly when you're working with the youth, like we live in, and uh, we live in a world where no one trusts anyone to do anything. So, you know, we have people that are already looking for you to try to get over on them. They're already so you have to go into. Uh, this thing, building a relationship. That's why I talk about relationships personally and professionally because you have to build a relationship before you're able to teach people something. See, back in the day when I was coming up, you just kind of took the adult's word for it and believed that it was right for the most part. Um, But now the youth, I mean, the youth are like, we don't trust, DTA, don't trust anybody. And people walk around that way, and it's because they've been deceived right. and hurt by those who uh, should have protected them. Let's just be real. So uh, when, when you know, we have such a terrible generational curse of molestation, you know, this whole Me Too movement has shown that. So, again, these are the people who should have protected us, and if they violated me, um, most of my clients uh, that, I've, that I've counseled have, you know, big issues with their parents. Because if your mother or father can um, betray you, there's a distorted view that you have with everyone else that comes behind them until you get healed and realize that that was just a deficit of theirs that they were operating out of. So ultimately, it comes back to you have to gift people. First of all, I operate by these creeds. Number one, I don't ask you to do what I want to do. So if I'm asking you to share your story, then I'm, I'm, I have to share mine. Right. So I just can't say I want you to tell me everything and I'm not willing to share mine. That's number one. Number two, um, I believe that 
you build a relationship with a person and you find yourself trustworthy. So you have to prove that over time. You can't just go in and say, I'm 45, you 15, you're going to listen to me because they're going to rebel. I don't believe that you can uh, discipline without love. You know, discipline without love leads to rebellion all day. And so you have to ultimately uh, build a relationship with someone, let them see that you're not going to betray them. Let them see that you're not like everyone else per se, and then earn the trust and go ahead and help to change their perspective so that they can change their lives. That's what I do as a coach. It's I only have one job. My job is to change your perspective. You'll change your life if I help you change your perspective. So that's what it comes down to. You cannot go in and want to teach until you reach, because if you don't reach them, then I don't, I'm not listening to what you say. You know, that's why a lot of the children don't learn in school. That's why a lot of the children don't learn in church because they're like, I just saw him with a lady up the street and he talked, he trying to talk to me about some la la, but he was just cheating on his wife. He was talking, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times our witness diminishes our message. When people see what we do, they don't hear what we say anymore. So I just focus on trying to be the best me. And when I fall short, be very, very transparent about it. No matter how vulnerable it makes me, I'm transparent with my children. I'm transparent. When my marriage was falling apart, um, guess what? I, which is what I'm going to talk about in Killer Connections Part 2. Um, I took my daughter to breakfast and said, hey, listen, this is not what marriage really looks like. This is what happens when you marry the wrong person, when you don't wait on God. So I was very, very transparent, even though it left me vulnerable as a parent. But I knew that my daughter understood that despite the fact that I make mistakes, I still have been chosen by God to lead you in this way. So... You know, I, I, you have to be, you have to just open up and just be real about things and, and allow people to, to, you know, take it how they take it. But you cannot go in just thinking you're going to teach without reaching. That's phenomenal. That's a very, 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 very awesome viewpoint. And, um, and I can relate, right? Because, you know, when we talk about ministry, you know, ministry in itself is already tough. You know, it's already tough because we're trying to teach and preach a message that people feel is an ancient message. When in actuality, mm -hmm. a lot of the things that they were teaching, you know, even when we were, when I was younger and when um, people that wrote with me were younger, we really didn't understand the importance of what they were teaching either because nobody really knew how to break it down or show us in our everyday life, you know, this is how this is going to affect you. Um, also, because this day, too, um, kids or the youth have gotten so desensitized to the demonic presence around them, um, to the things that the enemy has sent into the earth to really cause us to just totally waste away. They don't really take that seriously anymore. And so we to teach men to do ministry or to teach and to preach, because how can you hear without a preacher, right? To preach yeah. is tough already. Um, but. Being transparent, God um, dealt with me about being transparent um, in my ministry. And so there's a lot of people um, who will say stuff like, you know, well, you, you know, you don't want to bleed over the people and you don't want to do this. You want to do that. But God will, he will put me lively and you don't been live with me. <laughs> so, you know, there's been times where like you, you, you know, people who are, are in the spirit realm, you can see when everything in me is just kind of like, you know what, Jesus like, I, I can really snap right now. Like, I can really yeah. go off or I'm, I'm crying or I want to cry or I am crying. And there's been times where God has literally, in the middle of a situation that was hurting me so bad, that he would put me live and say, pray for the people. Talk to the people about this. Be transparent with the people. Tell them because somebody that's watching you over in another state, somebody that's watching you over in another country, they can relate to what you're dealing with right now. And because this is what you're about to do, like, in other words, ministry is not about me t not telling you what's going on with me. It's about telling you how I live through it, how intentionally yeah. I'm still saved in this moment. Am I hurting? Yeah. Absolutely. Am I messed up? Did this hurt me? I mean, like to the core? Absolutely. Do I feel like I don't want to, um, uh, do I feel like I don't want to be saved today? Sure don't. Cause I want to go off. I really want to hurt somebody today. And this is what I'm feeling. But because. 
I love the Lord. This is what I'm going to do. And so um, it's basically ministry by watching. And so you begin to, uh, to, to put yourself in a position where um, not only you're vulnerable, um, not, not just vulnerable, let me scratch that. There's a difference because you're not supposed to be vulnerable with everybody. But being right. transparent because I yeah. know that God is holding me is something different. Um, when we're teaching, even about preventative measures, here's the thing, right? You're teaching young women right now um, the signs to look for, things not to do, um, and places not to walk into, just in a natural, you know, physical relationship. And then there's somebody in the world that's, that's talking to the young girls too, excuse me, and helping them see, biblically, this is why God says, fornication is not cool. But then spiritually, you're connecting yourself with another individual. Um, sp- your spirits are connecting right now, right? And mm-hmm. each person that you connect with on this level, spiritually, you're causing something to happen within yourself. And, and, and I know you may not fully understand this yet, but when I talk to you again in five years and you've done all this stuff that you said that you wanted to do, I, you'll be able to understand a little bit better. But I'm trying to help you prevent that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not because I'm trying to make your life boring. It's not because I'm trying to make you not want to have fun or whatever the case might be. But it's because I love you and I want to protect you from that which is coming. And so being transparent pretty much is the way of ministry right now. And for anybody who is afraid to be vulnerable and you're afraid to open up your mouth and you're afraid to say that, listen, I know you're having suicidal thoughts today, but guess what? I have suicidal thought about Five days ago, my life ain't ain't, ain't ain't totally jacked up. There's nothing absolute. Some stuff ain't even wrong, but I'm dealing with this certain spiritual presence, and I'm dealing with that, and I got to be transparent with you because God just showed me that somebody was about to take their life if they didn't hear this message. Man, some things we are going to totally miss if we don't be transparent. So that in itself is, is, is super amazing. It's super amazing. So... I- I think we have to understand that God is not looking for perfection. He's looking for willingness, and neither are people, though. People are not looking for perfection in their leaders. They're looking for leaders who will be honest about where they've fallen short and honest about their expectations of the people that they're leading. So, I mean, my when I first started, my uh, slogan was, let's get better together. Um, mm-hmm. My slogan now is, let's do the work. Ultimately, you notice the first word is let us, because right. as you're working, I'm working. As you're getting better, I'm getting better. How can Absolutely. I lead you if I don't say three, four, five steps ahead? So right. many of us right. are sitting on our, our thrones thinking, well, I'm a coach. I don't need to invest in a coach. I don't need to invest right. in personal development. I don't need to invest in professional development. I don't need, All I need to know is, how to write this book so I can make some money, how to speak so I can make some money. And ultimately what happens is you stop watering, you know, Mm. gift. you stop, you stop developing, you stop cultivating, you stop nurturing, you know, and I've even said this to my family. My family has a choir and we just quite frankly got sloppy, you know, we stopped rehearsing Mm. Um, the family, you know, I wasn't in the choir anymore because, you know, I had some issues with, you know, what is, what's the criteria for directors? Like, we just don't let anybody? Okay, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and sit on out there because everybody going to be directed. But okay. So ultimately what happened was we stopped, you know, rehearsing because we, we got a little, you know, proud. You know, our family has a choir and we can sing and all of this. And what happened? The anointing started to, mm-hmm. it started to show. Mm-hmm. You know, it started to show that you were no, you know, no longer, mm-mm. And so you have to be careful with how you handle your gift. You, you know, God never get, puts us in a position where we don't need him. So what makes us think we don't have to continue to develop? We My God. To continue to, we have to continue to nurture the gift. We have to continue to, to, to be connected to the gift giver. Like, we can't just, oh, thanks, God, you know, and just move on. No, he does not put us in a position where we don't need him. We have to remain connected. So, again, um, even reaches even for us. God has to reach us so he can teach us. He had to reach us. And some of us, he had to reach us through situations. Some of us, he reached us because we were just obey. You know, we obeyed the call. 
But ultimately, if God reaches us and then teaches us, what makes us think that we can skip the reaching part? But the reaching is where the work is, and that's why a lot of people don't do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And I love you so much, Z. I really, really, really do. I'm excited. I know you do. <laughs> I, um, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to join me tonight, and I'm glad that you were able to share about Taylor Connections. And I really hope that the people are taking heed. So when we share this, and people will be listening to this again in the morning on drive time, and they'll be listening to this on Spreaker over and over again. And so I'm hoping that as you listen to this, that you would take that time and take that moment to go and download this book or order your um, your paperback copy. It is at killerconnections.com, www.killerconnections.com. And um, Z has a goal. She wants this book to get into the hands of 1,000 young women. We're thinking like like way more than that, right? Because um, if, if you can get it, and, and that's just her goal, that don't mean you stop there. <laughs> and so right, if you absolutely. want to um, definitely gift a young woman with this book, um, get her email address uh, that might be linked to her um, Amazon.com or her Kindle or whatever, and, and, and send her a book. Uh, tell her how to download the free Kindle app on her phone or her computer or her, on her tablet, but definitely share this book with another young woman. I'm, I'm going to order one for my daughter a little bit later. And so I want you guys to... Um. Yeah, don't please don't not order it because <laughs> I'm telling you it's gonna help a lot of us, not just your young women, but it's gonna help a lot of people. Um, because there's so much meat to this. Um, Lee, I want you to give give any other information that you need to give concerning the book, concerning yourself, um, and where people can connect with you. Um, if they're having issues in their relationship and they need a relationship coach or relationship strategist, excuse me, um, <laughs> tell them how they yeah, tell them how they can find you and get more um, 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 get in touch with you. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I'm Zakia Monique Z, as in Zulu A K I Y A Monique spelled M O N I Q U E. You can find me on. Um, Facebook is Zakia Monique, and you can find me on Instagram as Zakia Monique Speaks. And you can also book a, a call. If you just want to book a, a free uh, call where we can find out how we can help you further, bit.ly forward slash uh, chat with Z, just the letter Z, chat with Z. And, again, I help entrepreneurs, coaches, and other professional women to um, attract and maintain healthy relationships both personally and professionally. So, if you know you need personal development as a coach, then don't stop getting it. You know, don't stop um, getting what you need so that you can continue to lead your people or lead the tribe that God has placed you over. So you can find me, Zakia Monique, uh, in most places on online or Zakia Monique Speaks, and you can find me uh, to book a, a session just, you know, to see how we can help you further in your relationship at bit.ly dot b i t dot l y forward slash chat with the z just the letter z but i would like to know if i could just uh read the preface really quick yeah you have time sure for that? okay so i just want to read a snippet of it just to let you see how it starts out so it says my hand gripped the tree and stopped my fall but my eyes saw nothing but gray it seemed like everything happened in slow motion as i closed my eyes I felt a combination of rage, shock, and embarrassment fill my body. When I opened my eyes, I realized two things. One, that my gray contact lens had slid out of place because, two, I had just experienced the very thing that my mother and grandmother had endured, the same thing that I said I would never allow. He hit me so hard that my contact lens slid out of place. He said that he would never hit me. But just that quick, I was a domestic violence victim, and I was only 18 years old. This was never supposed to happen. But that's the thing about toxic relationships. There is no control. There are no boundaries. If I would have known then what I know now, I would have left that day. Yet I believe things will get better. I was wrong. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, <laughs> I'm leave, I'm leave the wow at that. I could because because I don't know how many people watch Greenleaf, um, and 
I really didn't want to get into like any series because I know that I kind of get caught up in stuff like that. I can, like, I love Law and Order SVU, so I can watch like marathons continuously, right? <laughs> so I didn't want to get into uh-huh. Greenleaf, but I watched a couple of episodes. And another part is because I kind of felt like, you know, is this is this show making a spectacle of the church, blah, 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 whatever. But God uh-huh. began to deal with me while I was watching it um, with my daughter. And he was beginning to show me the sequence of things and how things go. This is just the reality of what happens in the body of Christ, but I'm still working in everything. So if you watch the last episode, you'll see that God kind of worked out a lot of the different things that was going on with the family and this is that and the other. But I brought that up to talk about the, the young girl named Zora that was in the, you know, on the show. And Zora was in a relationship with a young man who was hitting on her. You know, he was cheating and he was doing all kind of stuff. Her cousin, um, came out at one point at the cotillion, saw him hit her, went back in to tell her dad, this is that and the other. The dad hits him, and the girl gets furious. Mm-hmm. Not at the boyfriend, of course, but at the dad. Yes. Can't wait till she turned 18. She was like a few days from turning 18. Can't wait till she turns 18. About to run away with him. All this different stuff. Being rebellious. You know, your parents just don't get it. You know what I mean? Because that's what a lot of people think. Um, but it made me, mm-hmm. which you, when you just read that, it made me think about the mindset that really, really needs to be shifted and changed. And a lot of the problem in what you're saying is so relevant. And I pray that people would order this book and give it to their young girls. Because one of the things that, that happens is they feel like I'm, I'm in this ride or die. Yes. And literally they don't understand how close they are to death dealing right. with certain individuals, you know, and so they're ride or die marry me, marry me, marry me. I'm going to have this day. No, excuse Let me go back. I'm going to have this baby. Because if I have mm-hmm. his baby, then maybe he'll, you know, he'll be better with me or he'll do more for me or he'll, you know, whatever the case might be, ride or die. Oh, wait. With the mindset. Or, or, or I'll do drugs with you. Did you mm. know that most women, most women that start on drugs are, uh, you know, starting because of a man? Right. Um, so they typically start because they want to keep him home or they want to please him. So they'll start right. to, you know, because they just want to, okay, well, he, well, he, if he smoke weed, so I'm going to start smoking and, you know, because I want to be with him and I want to do with him. You know, so, right. and, and, and as I told my daughter, I said, it's, it's often easier to pull down than it is to pull up. So you have to be mm. very careful. You have to be very careful because you can call yourself going into a situation and thinking that you're going to change somebody, but then they change you. you know? the Bible says so, so, yeah, mm-hmm. and then the second thing is a lot of our young women are going to prison now for carrying drugs for God. Yep, so, I'm trying to protect so, them. Yeah. And, yep. yep, absolutely. And so then all of a sudden now you have a drug case, and, and the drug case is attached to the fact that you don't, now you, you, it messes with your federal, uh, the ability to get federal assistance. So when you, you know, My when Lord. you, uh, yeah, when you tote drugs, and see, many of us love Bill Clinton, but Bill Clinton passed two laws that really, really damaged the black community. Uh, one of them was uh, saying that uh, if you are caught with any type of drugs, you can't get federal, like Section 8. You can't get any of that. Okay? Mm. And so, and then the second one came back and added to it, and I think it, it hit education or something. But I, um, I can't quote it exactly because it's not the same. But he passed those two laws, and it affects your ability to qualify for federal assistance. So if you get caught toting the drugs, and then you try to get out and get your life together, um, yeah, so unless you have a job waiting on you or a family that's affluent or something like that, what are you going to do? If you're a woman, right. you typically may need some Section 8 or you may need some assistance, but now you don't qualify for it because of this drug case. You see what I'm right. saying? So, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, it goes much deeper than we think. There are a lot of young women that are not, uh, being snatched, they're literally running away into the yep. arms of the human trafficker. Hello. You hear what I'm saying? So they're right. running right into right. the arms of the human traffickers. Like, oh, me and my mother got into it, so I left. You know, you left and went right into the arms of the human trafficker, and now he's sent right. you out, and you don't understand how you got there because you were just being wined and dined by this man. Mm-hmm. So, again, Absolutely. this book helps with all of this. You know, it helps them to see it for themselves, and the good thing about the book is you're not telling them as a parent because if we tell them for some reason, they don't believe us. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Just like we didn't I believe do. our parents, you know? Right. So, right. Yeah. But I, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to let you go, Z, but this has been so, so, so good. But you, this is the reason why, you know, again, what you're doing is super amazing. You giving this book and, you know, writing this book and all that. Um, I want to encourage those who are listening, especially those who are spiritual, please don't stop being spiritual with your kids. This is, the Bible teaches all these things, all the things that we're talking about right now. It may not be specific to certain things, but it teaches us how to prevent, right? It teaches us why we should not do certain things. Like we're talking about, you know, these girls running into the arms of these men and they're being so connected with these guys. And we do not explain to them just how spiritual sex is. If mm-hmm. This is not just a playtime. This is not just something that feels good. There is a connection that is hard to break yes. when you put yourself soul in a position time. like that. It's so, a soul tie. And so, and, 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 you know, for those of you who heard me teach, you'll hear that, that your soul, which is your mind, is the seat of your emotions. It is what you think with, what you choose with, and what you feel with. So when you connect with somebody in that manner, you are connecting your feelings, your choices, and your emotions with them. And so it is not easy to break these cycles. And so when you are rejected, because see, men deposit, we receive, right? So when you're rejected by that same man that you gave your whole body to, now you're going to seek that affection in somebody else, and now you're creating another soul tie. So all your mm-hmm. emotions that's been connected to the other, they didn't go away because <laughs> it's a spiritual mm-hmm. connection. But now you're adding to. And so we who are spiritual, we can, and it's not to say that you can't teach them, you know, and try to relate it to the world system and show them, you know, all these different things. But you need to add the spiritual component so that your daughters and your sons understand the reason why the Bible says this is this. You're watching this stuff happen in the world, but it's because what? And the Bible tells us that we have turned our hearts away from God, so therefore we're not learning why this stuff is relevant, and we're trying to twist the truth or have tell them the truth because we don't want them to rebel against us. But guess what? They're doing the very things that's causing their souls to be connected with people that's going to make them rebel whether you teach them the spiritual truth or not. Right. Or so we don't we want to, to teach them the spiritual the truth. Where we don't. We don't want to teach them the spiritual truth because we're not living it. That's another mm. issue. Because we're not living it. Is. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because we're not Absolutely. living it. Absolutely. And, and, and here's the thing. Um, either we, we're not living it or we didn't live it at one time, and so we, don't, yeah. so we feel like we don't want to. You know, well, I did it, and I can't really tell them not to do it. Absolutely you can Absolutely you can. And the reason why you tell them or share, at least just share, the reason why you share is because of that very reason. I, yeah. I mean, I, I did so much, Z, I did so much. And I, I wasn't really the girl who did everything, but the area that was my weakness, I did it a lot, right? Yeah. And so when I began to be, you know, I was real kind of strict with my daughter still, you know, she's about to be 18 soon, but until you turn 18 and even after there's still certain things that we're going to kind of stick to because, and so she was like, man, my mama don't let me do nothing. And then you begin to listen to people tell you what, well, you know, mama told, you know, she's kind of strict with um, Nene. So she going to run buck wild after she leaves the house. Um, did you just plant that in her head and tell her that she's going to run buck wild when she leaves the house? Look, first right. of all, pump break. Right. So here's the thing. I'm not so strict with you to where I don't want you to live and enjoy yourself. No, I'm trying to teach you that there are certain things that come with age. Right. Certain things that I'm going to teach you, give you a little dose. I'm not going to teach you everything that's grown up when you're 13. You don't understand everything that's grown up when you're 13. So let's go in levels. While you're 13 years old, if you can't be responsible, I'm not letting you do what everybody else does. Because if you're not responsible here, how are you going to be responsible there? So it's just certain things we begin to teach our children. And so we had a conversation one time, me and her, and I told her, you know, she was asking questions. She was like, but mama, you so this and so that. I said, well, do you understand that had I not been that way with you at all, then you probably, and not just probably because God showed me that there were certain things that she would have done had I not taken certain actions, right? And so Mm -hmm. she was like, but I wouldn't have never did what you did. And I said, no, baby, you didn't do what I did because of what I was to you, because Uh of what I told you you couldn't do, because I didn't let you uh, sleep at co-ed sleepovers with your friend. You what? 
No, ma'am. Right. So, you know, right. <laughs> so it's things I, would, I just wouldn't allow you to do. And you hated me for it. You resented me for it. But I can guarantee you there's going to be a day where you truly understand it. And they don't understand it now because the world says this is what it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be. Every reality TV show tell you this is what it's supposed to be like. And so you're creating more and more spiritual things and they don't take the spiritual seriously at all anyway, but you're creating more of it and it's not ending. It's not ending. So what you're doing is super amazing. And I am like, literally, I am so excited for you. Congratulations again on your first book. Thank you. You deserve um, everything that's going to come out of it because you do know that God is not done. And for the sacrifice that you've made for ink, for, for impact over income, <laughs> Just take, take, take your cue from Solomon. Solomon said, Father, I wish that you would give me wisdom. Yes. And when God gave him that wisdom and he increased him in wisdom, he also increased him in every other area. Solomon could have asked for riches, more riches, and he could have asked for more influence. And he could have asked for more of everything. But he said, give me wisdom. And with that, God gave him the other good things. And so I'm going to speak that blessing over your life tonight before you get off this line, that the very thing that you've asked God for, he found it noble. And now he's going to increase you more and more because of it. I- I'm excited. Amen. Thank you, Z, for joining me Amen. tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having You're me. I appreciate so- it. You're so, so welcome. And we'll talk again soon. You guys, I'm about to take a quick break. Jerry is going to give you something, another independent artist that is going to just totally um, be amazing. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, you guys, I am going to give you what I call pit time. And that is prayer inspiration and prophecy or preaching inspiration and prophecy, whatever you want to call it. But we're going to come and we're going to bring you the word of God for these last few minutes. And you are going to be changed tonight just from listening to the word of the Lord. Jerry, the break, please. You're listening to Jerry Worldwide Podcast.
Yes. Yes. I made it. I am victorious. I made it. I made it. I made it. Jerry didn't let me know who this was, but man, that was phenomenal. Um, oh wait, I think he's about to tell me who it is now because I want you guys to, to just tell me. Amen. Just tell me. And she was singing about being victorious, about making it. And I'm telling you guys, like, listen, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. And that's what Donna Lauren said. When you have to put yourself in a position where you can sing a song like this and begin to dance around your room, when you feel like everything is coming down on you, you feel like your life is just being shattered and everything is coming at you all which way, you got to get yourself in a position where you start singing that I win. I am victorious. I made it. I am not making it. I'm not going to make it, but I made it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you can begin to tell yourself those things, I'm telling you, you can conquer some of everything. Your mind, for one, your mind, for one, when you can begin to tell yourself that I win, I made it, I'm victorious, when you can begin to say that over and over and over to yourself, even when things don't look like it, I'm telling you, it begins to shift everything on the inside of you, everything on the inside of you. When you begin to tell yourself, listen, I'm not struggling. I'm not in a point where I'm going to be uh, uh, knocked down, dragged out no more. Yes, I am going through. Yes, it's trials and tribulations happening. But it's, the Bible says rejoice. Hallelujah. And in these times, in times of temptation, in times of trial, in times of struggle, rejoice. Hallelujah. And so when you see somebody getting their praise on and you know their life is wrecked, don't go over them and look at them and act like, oh, my God, you just being phony. And, and I know you're going through. You want to talk about it. No, they don't want to talk about it. They want to praise about it. They want to praise through it. And they're supposed to. And, and God tells us to. Because, listen, he's trying to transform you, what? By the renewing of your mind. The world begins to show us certain things. Like when you're sad, you have to be all down and depressed and in a dumps and in your bed and curled up. And you can't get up. You can't walk and you can't talk and you don't want to eat. And we begin to think that that's the norm. Hallelujah. But the norm for a born-again believer is that when I am faced with diverse trials and tribulations, when I am faced with temptations, I need to learn how to rejoice. Hallelujah. I need to learn how to rejoice. I need to learn how to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. So I'm going, I'm, going to, I'm going to continue. I'm going to talk to you guys for this last few minutes about some of the things that we were talking about with Z. Um, and we're talking about toxic relationships. And now I'm going to bring you biblical sound, um, this, this, the, 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 the biblical part of what she was talking about and the reason why, yes, even though we're supposed to love people, we still have to be very, very conscious of our dealings. The Bible says for us to guard our hearts with all diligence because out of it flows what? The issues of life. The reason why we must guard ourselves, and this is not about being hard. This is not about having a heart of stone. We can't have a loving heart and have a heart of stone, too. No, we just have to be very conscious and conscious about the things that we are doing. So before I do that, though, I want to share a couple of things with you guys so that you can stay connected with me. I did not mention, and I don't know if I introduced myself fully to those who are listening, but yes, I am a prophet. Yes, I love the Lord. Yes, I am an ordained minister. Um, and yes, I've been uh, pronounced and called out as a prophet of God, and I operate in that vein um, 24 hours a day. Like, God doesn't, you know, I don't get to do it on my schedule. It's all about his schedule. But I am also a certified life coach. I am a certified life coach. I've been a certified life coach since 2010. I love doing what I do. But I begin to bring it into what I do ministry-wise. And so it is my position as a coach, um, areas of self-worth I deal in, areas of closer walking with God I deal in, areas of unmasking before um, yourself, before God, taking the mask off. I deal in those areas. I'm also an accomplished author. I've, um, I've actually written 
over seven, eight, nine books, I think, and collaborated on like four of them. So I have a lot of books out there that I don't often talk about all the time, but I do have um, a, a good bit of books. I'm a part of books that have been bestsellers. And so I guess technically I would be a bestselling author. And um, I, I've been writing for a while since 2007. Right. And also I am an inspirational speaker and a preacher. So with that, what that means is, yes, I travel. Yes, I preach in churches. Yes, I preach at conferences. Yes, I do all those things. Um, but virtually I do a lot so that people who are in different parts of the world can stay connected to me. Um, if I have a live seminar and, and, and people are registering to come, people that are local may be able to do a two or three or four hour seminar because they're local. But when people are in other parts of the country and other parts of in other states and international, they're not always able to join me live. And so I do um, uh, a lot of uh, virtual things so that you can be a part of it. And so I want to announce for you two things that I have coming up. Um, one is starting on March the 4th, March the 4th, and that's coming up very soon, but I am starting another Closer Walk Challenge. I am starting in another Closer Walk Challenge, and so for those of you who don't just want to talk a good game, but you want to walk it out, uh, a lot of people who follow me, they know that I, I am very big about talking about being intentional, being intentional, um, because the Bible says for us to submit to God resist the devil so that he can flee from us, right? And so in that are your instructions. Submitting your life to God. God, I give my all to you. I want to surrender my whole life to you. Resist the devil. That is an intentional thing. You cannot resist him unless you intentionally what? Resist him, right? And then he'll flee. And so if you are not intentional about this walk with God, if you are not intentional about being closer with him, then you are not uh, going to be able to just fully live it out. Okay, and so I want to start this challenge again. It is normally a 30-day challenge, and that's what we're going to stick to. Um, we're gonna, we have a private group for those who um, – we have a private group called the Closer, Closer Walk Crew. That's automatic. It's like a free group. You can join that group. You get videos. You get tidbits. I come on live every once in a while and, and kind of, you know, chop it up with you guys. But this actual challenge, the actual challenge is for those who are going to allow me to be even more specific with you. Um, every day for 30 days, I'm going to encourage you, but I'm also going to have a call, um, a personal call with those who register. And we're going to chop it up a couple of times throughout those 30 days. And you get one-on-one uh, -on -one time with me as a coach. One-on-one -on -one time with me as a coach. So it's a Closer Walk Challenge. It is going to start on March 4th. And the cost of it is simply the cost of the book on Amazon.com. Now, I don't necessarily want you to order it off of Amazon. I would rather you order it personally from me because I want to sign it. I want to sign a personal message to you. Okay, so I want to sign a personal message to you, however God leads me uh, to write in this particular book. So what I need you to do is inbox me. If you are interested in doing the Closer Walk Challenge, the cost of the challenge is going to be the cost of the book. And I do believe that the book is $7.99 on Amazon.com. Um, let me tell you right now. So I'll have y'all coming on. they be like, uh uh, Prophet, as you said, you said it was $7.99. Now the book is available um, as an ebook, but I am the the cost. If you purchase it as an ebook, then of course whatever the balance is, the other five dollars you have to invoice me for it. But the cost of the book, the physical book, that is how much it is to register. So it is seven ninety nine. I want you to inbox me and say, hey, Prophetess, I'm interested in doing the Closer Walk Challenge. I love the Lord. I do pretty good, but hey, I need help with this walk. I need help with this walk. I want to stay consistent. Um, and can I tell y'all, y'all might think that 30 days is nothing. <laughs> y'all might think that 30 days is nothing at all when you're doing a challenge. But can I tell y'all that y'all are so wrong, so very wrong. When you got somebody that's in your face that's saying, listen, on day one, you're doing this. On day two, you're doing this. On day three, you're doing this. On day four, you're doing this. I've had people who've been walking with God for a lot of years and they come out of this challenge. Some of them are able to get to two weeks. Some of them are able to get to three weeks. But there have been few that's been able to do the full 30 days without feeling like I got to fall off. And so I want you guys to know coming into this that this ain't no punk challenge. 
<laughs> this ain't no fun challenge. So 30 days of a closer walk challenge. The cost of the book is all you owe me. Amen. And then the book is called Just a Closer Walking. Just a closer walking. And it is on Amazon, but please do not order it on Amazon. Inbox me and say, hey, Prophetess, invoice me for the $7.99 plus shipping. $7.99 plus shipping. I want to be a part of the Closer Walk Challenge. That starts on March 4th. Also coming up on March, starting March 20th, starting March 20th, we are going to be doing um, a Closer Walk extensive study. Four weeks. Four weeks, every Wednesday night, um, we're going to be doing a four-week extensive study. Let me tell you what that is going to include. We're talking two, two and a half hours per week. We're going to be talking rep about repentance versus resistance repentance versus resistance, the difference and what it is that you're going to be doing with that. Uh, we're going to talk about greed versus principles. Talk about money, greed versus principles. We're going to be talking about my dreams versus his will, my dreams versus his will. And we're going to be talking about uh, being okay with being used. A lot of people say, Lord, use me. I want to be used. I want to be used. I really do not think that everybody understands the full of what that means. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. That session is called Use Me, Lord, and it's called Being Okay with Being Used. Again, we're going to talk about repentance versus resistance. Um, there's a time when you are a babe in Christ and you repent more than a little bit, and that's okay. Then there'll come a time where you grow into resisting the devil like we just talked about. And so we're going to talk about repentance versus resistance. We're going to talk about greed versus principle. We're going to talk about my dreams versus his will. And we're going to talk about being used by God. This too is a coaching. Um, this is a coaching, a four week coaching extensive. I do not want you to miss out on it. It is $30 per course per session, or you can do $75 for all four. Yeah, that's intense. $30 per session. So if you do each of them separately, then you're just looking at a cool $120, right? That's, that's $120 for all four. But if you do all four and you, you eat, inbox me and say, hey, prophetess, I want to, I'm ready to do it. I just, I'm ready to do it. You can do all four for 75 bucks, which is super phenomenal. I want you guys to get in on this. Get in on this. So what we got? March 4th begins the Closer Walk Challenge. The only cost you have is to purchase the book from me. Inbox me and say, hey, Prophetess, I want to be in on the Closer Walk Challenge. I, even if you did it before, let's get it. Let's get it. Um, the Closer Walk Challenge. Um, also on March 20th for four weeks, one day per week for two, two and a half hours, we are going to dig into these studies, and it is going to be intense, and it's going to be deep. You can do it for $30 per session if there's only one or two of them you want to do, or you can do it for six to $75 for all four. Got it? I hope you do. I hope you do. And in the meantime, if you have not done it already, go over to the inspirationaltreasure.com and download your free gift. Can y'all do that for me? Amen and amen. Well, let me dive into this for this for my last few minutes with you guys, and I want you to get these scriptures so that you can take this with you. Z talked about killer connections, those connections that literally kill us spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and sometimes physically. There are literally relationships that you can get into that physically kill you. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, the fact that nobody makes you happy. There's nothing in your life that makes you happy. Every relationship you get into, you're the toxic one. No, I'm not talking about that. Uh, or you blaming everybody for being toxic. Oh, that must have been a toxic relationship. Oh, that must have been a... No, 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 no. You, you probably you probably need to deal with some stuff within yourself, right? Um, but what I am talking about, what I am talking about tonight is the toxic relationships that keep you from being everything that you want to be in your life with God, with yourself. Amen. First Corinthians 15 and 33 says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. 
Do not be deceived. And what does it mean by don't be deceived? You know, we, we especially those of us, some of us who are believers, if y'all are not, if y'all are anything like me, I'm a love person. That means I can make friends with almost anybody. I've been friends with some of the meanest people in the world. I've made some of my closest friends were girls who said, listen, I don't do chicks. I can't have relationships with females, right? And so I, I've been, you know, close with them. Like we established relationships that still are happening right now today. Right. And so I've been I've been able to kind of just be friends from any and everybody. And that's because I'm strong in who I am in my position and not to say I'm perfect because I'm absolutely not perfect. But as far as my love walk and as far as how I am with people, I'm pretty good at it. But there have been people in my youth and when I was growing up that were totally not good for me. Right. That I was with them. I wanted to hang out. Uh, I was um, hanging with the bullies sometimes because I was tired of being bullied. So I linked up and was friends with people who were bullies. And then I remember one day um, I, one of my friends, a girl that was my friend in school, because they were teasing her and talking about her because she was really heavy set. I began to tease and pick at her and, and because she was really heavy set. And I'm going to tell y'all, y'all going to laugh at me, but this girl got so furious, man, like so furious, right, that she literally pushed me against the wall, picked me up, off, my feet was about three inches off the ground. You see stuff like that in the movies. And she just cried, and she was mad, and she looked at me, and she just cried, and she was mad. And when she let me down, I began to cry and apologize, because first of all, I wasn't that person anyway. But I wanted so bad to fit in with other people that I began to do what they were doing, and that is not the character of God. I began to get into, you know, you get into these relationships with men, and men, you get into these relationships with women, and, you know, you were nice all before you met them, but they begin to be mean to you and treat you all kind of ways. And so then you begin to go out and treat other people like that. All of a sudden, you nonchalant. All of a sudden, you treat people like, who the heck are you? Why are you in my face? You ain't never been like that before, but now what's being done to you behind closed doors, you're taken outside with you. Don't be deceived. You, you so, you so uh, clingy, you can be such this and that for everybody, and you think as a believer that when the Bible tells us to pray for our enemies and, and, and to love those who despitefully use us, yeah, it said all that, but it didn't tell you to be best buddies with the person that's robbing stores on a regular basis. And so we have to be very, very, very careful of toxic relationships. Guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. Now, I want y'all to go and go to killerconnections.com, get this book, order the book for the young women so we can help Z reach that thousand. But I want you to read it yourself, too, and begin to think on those things and then get you some scriptures. Get the scriptures that come behind it. Um, Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Romans 16, 17 through 18, begin to get you some scriptures to understand that God does not want you to be in the company of those who are going to change your walk with him. Amen. Amen. This has been Prophet Shalonda Williams, a.k.a. The Inspirational Treasure, and you have been on with Inspirational Treasure on the radio. We love you so, so very much just because we can. And we're going to see you back here again next week, Tuesday at 10 o'clock p.m. on Positive Power 21. We love you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, family, for joining us on Inspirational Treasure right here on Positive Power with Double XI Christian Media. That's right, share the file, everybody. Bless somebody until the bless is called bless. All right, let's do it, y'all. It's empowerment time. That's right, we got we to gotta share and help God's children. All right, let's serve, y'all. All right, y'all, coming right up. I want you to enjoy this beat right here. It's by Profect. Right, Miguel Esparza He's from out Washington Seattle, Washington Not the DMV, Seattle, Washington Where they getting some snow This is a Chicken Beat production